Okay, so this lecture we study a certain operator d and d that takes a k form to a k plus 1 form. So let's first in discuss this differential of a zero form. So we let a open rn, f is a zero form, and we define df a one form such that df and the input value is basically the direction derivative at f with the vector v, okay? So df x in a vector and it is just equal to this. And df is called a differential of f and we know that df is cr minus 1 because f is cr, right? So df is cr minus 1. And here we have that um, we know that the differential are linear. The operator d is linear on zero forms. So we have h equal to af plus bg, then dh is equal to this, right? Because the derivative is linear. And we have this. It's equal to this. Because we have put this, substitute this, do this. We have this. h of this is this, h of this is this, this, and we are done. Okay? So, um, now we have another lemma, and this lemma says that so if those are the elementary one forms, right, and pi i is the ith projection function, then d pi i is equal to this elementary one form. So the, the differential of the projective projection function is this one form, elementary one form. And here's the proof. So we know this is an infinity, so the differential is an infinity. We just do a computation, equal to vi, so it's equal to this. Okay, very simple. And we do a node pi i by xi. And here's some explanation that we abuse the notation slightly denoting pi i by xi. Okay, so here is our convention. So, if that was the general point, we denote it by xi. Then this dxi equals this elementary one form. So in alternating sets, we introduce this notation. It's the, so each of them is elementary k form, right? Exactly the same. And we denote this as dxi, and this i corresponds to the index. And so the general k form can be written as this. So these are the components, and these are the elementary k form. And okay, so yeah, again, they're like. So here's like the remark on why we use this notation is like kind of reasonable. Okay, and uh, we move on. So 30.3, it says that the differential of a zero form is equal to this. So in Leibniz notation, it's going to be look like this. Okay. So here's a proof. The proof, I wrote it down. I, I did the computation right here. So we evaluate both sides. So df x at xv is by definition equal to this, right? And this is just this. And this right, is equal to this. Okay. And this this equation, right? We have this, this equation, right? So this equation, taking value of x v, is gonna be equal to. Those are like the projection ones. So this one is basically becomes v i, right? And this, and this is exactly equal to the sum of the like those, right? See f one f n right, and it turns.
turns out that they're the same if you just multiply it. If you just multiply it out, right? It gives you this one. And all the way down to this one, dot product with this one, with this one. So they're the same. Okay? And here's another convention. Because it's convenient that if F is CR, then this is CR minus 1. So to avoid those difficulties, we make all the forms are smooth. Okay? When we're going to throw in more definitions, we denote this set. We set up all K forms and IN is a vector space. Right? And it's called linear space of K forms. So this is a vector space of K forms on A. For A, the open set and RN, whatever. Right? Okay, so here it comes to the main theorem. So this main theorem says that there exists unique operation linear transformation. So this linear transformation, D maps the K to K minus one, a uh, K plus one form. And such that one for F is zero form, then this is a one form and this is true. And when we got need out our forms very circularly, then we have this long formula. And for every d d omega is equal to zero. And we call this d the differential operator. And d omega is the differential of this form. So step one, we we'll verify the uniqueness. So we, we show that for we show this result first. And we're gonna prove this by induction. In the case of one, we buy property three. So the first is three, we're done. When there's only one of them, right? Then we're done. And we use k minus one or some k. We let need to be the k minus one product, wedge product, and we calculate this. Then this vanishes because by three, right? This vanishes, and this also vanished by inductive hypothesis, right? This vanishes by inductive hypothesis, so the whole thing vanishes. So, and this formula is by Q, okay? It's plus or minus, we don't know, but anyways, they both vanish. Okay, so we have proven this formula. Now, we show that, we show that for any K form, it is entirely determined by its value on zero forms, which means that it is entirely depends on the first first so so d is unique right because it depends on this one so we're going to show this result because d is linear so this to consider a random scalar times a basis element right so because d is linear right now we have this well this by definition is equal to this and then by property 2, we expand it like this, and this, 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 well, this vanishes, right? We just prove it up here. Remember what is dxi, right? It's a wedge product of the elementary one forms, right? So, we're good. It entirely depends on this one. Okay, so step one, step two, we define the operator D. So for omega written like this, we define its differential to become all the D, Fi, and we take a wedge product with this one. And here we're gonna make some verifications. So first we have to make sure that the omega is, is smooth, right? So we just multiply out with this, we use the theorem, right? Because this is a zero form, and this should be x f i right? No. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, it is this one. And we can express this as a linear combination at k plus one forms, right? We want to express this. Well, this is simple. So for every i, right, we can just delete the j such that j is in the tuple 
and the other for others. We just rearrange with this pi such as like ascending, blah, blah, blah. Then the omega is just some sum of this, right? Some of djf, but this is saying smooth because f is assumed to be smooth. So it's like the, all of them is also smooth. So d omega is smooth. Now I'm gonna show that d is linear. P0, we, we proved already, right? have written in basis, k forms, then you expand them, right? Because d is linear, right? And we can make this become step because when k is zero, we have the linear property. And because the wedge product is distributive, we can, then we get back this one. So we're done, okay? And step three, we want to verify we want to verify this one but for this one we have to show that we need some results first so for any k tuple from one to n we show that f is a zero form okay we have this and we can take off the parentheses right take off the parentheses for any k tuple from the set one to n if J had duplicates, we're done, right? Because we know this already. And otherwise, we do some some permutation, right? Such as in uh, as which product is anti-commutative. And here we use knowledge of permutation and wedge product, right? Every time you switch them, you multiply by negative one because any permutation is a composite of elementary permutations and every elementary position has sine negative one so with that being in mind we can have verified this one and also we have this equals to this by definition because i are ascending so this is by definition we we're proving for arbitrary ones now this put the sign inside because d is linear this is hom homogeneity whatever and we get this and then we get this right because they equal each other and now for dxi right we could do this substitution and then we pull the sign out and then we could cancel out both sides so that we have this and then we're done okay so with this we can verify too this uh equation both k all zero so they're all zero forms then this is by the product rule of derivatives and by theorem and we we'll just write it down right okay if k are both positive we consider suffices to consider something like this right because d and the wedge product are linear now we take it through to this and we can take off the parentheses right by three and then by step four right we have show that that by by like by here right there are all like zero forms so we can make it here because this is equal to this we proved for zero forms and we use the distributive property of wedge product and we have this and this and this is because the anti-commutativity of the wedge product and this is one form and this is k form so it's k times one right we use this one and observe this is equal to this and this is equal to this and when one of them is zero we just take off the dxi Right, we just take this off. Eventually, we take this off, and we're good. Okay, now we finally verify the third one. So we finally verify this one. Okay, so okay, is zero zero. Then we have this right, and we take d n because d is linear, and we also involve the wedge product by definition. And for this one, we use the theorem again. 
right? Use the serum again, right? And we delete all i equal to j and collect remaining terms. And this is it becomes this series. So let me just explain a bit of this series. So so when i is equal to j, we're all done, right? So for j equal to one and i equal to two, right? So with if if i is greater than j, right? So this one is greater than this one. Right, this index is greater than this index, but here is like the i e e less than j, so we we swap them and then we times negative one, right? We multiply by negative one. And on the other hand, we might have i equal to one, but j equal to two, right? I equal to j equal to two, right? <laughs> then it be, it constitutes like right it makes a contribution into this summation right because the summation because this is one and two right one two two like two one one two whatever right so like it's kind of like by symmetry right it's kind of by symmetry so for we just take all the i less than j and this happens by swapping them and times negative one because it's anti-commutative wedge products then we have this and because this is equal to zero because f is smooth function right so we're done now we can see positive and sufficient to consider this case because it's linear now this is this right this one is this one right by definition and we use second property right becomes this one minus this one this one vanishes right and this one we consider this one this one is just one times the xi this and this is, it also vanishes so we verified one two and three and this is a linear function this is a linear transformation and we're good okay so before we finish this lecture we'll introduce like a definition of exact forms and closed forms so zero form is exact if it's constant and for a k form is exact such that it exists a theta such that d theta is equal to this omega closed if your differential is a zero map so we know that exact means closed by th third property right because if you're exact right then this is equal to zero right because this is equal to zero exact implies closed and the converse will be discussed in the future for the will be discussed after next lecture okay so see you guys